Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion on solving quadratic equations. So in the previous couple videos, we talked about solving quadratic equations using factoring, the square root property, and completing the square. In this video, we're going to finish up our discussion on solving quadratic equations by using the quadratic formula, and then also determine the most efficient method to use when solving a quadratic equation. After this video, we'll have four different methods that we can use. All right, solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. It actually turns out that using completing the square, you can derive the quadratic formula from general form, which can be used to solve all quadratic equations. And so this formula is what's called the quadratic formula. So regardless of what type of method that you want to use, you can use factoring, completing the square, or square property. If you have a quadratic equation, you can always use the quadratic formula to solve it. So here's how. The quadratic formula says the solutions from a quadratic equation, and the equation must be in general form to be able to solve using the quadratic formula. A and the A cannot be zero. We talked about that earlier, that if A was zero, then it's no longer a quadratic equation, which means you can't use the quadratic formula. Once you have the equation written in general form, you should be able to identify the coefficients A, the B, and the C. Remember that the A is the coefficient in front of the x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is the constant term. The solutions are x equals the opposite of b, plus or minus, square root, b squared subtract 4 times a times c, and this entire numerator is divided by 2 times a. So to be able to use the quadratic formula, you need to first rewrite the equation into general form, or some people call it standard form, so that you can identify what the values of a, b, and c are for the coefficients. So that way you can substitute them in to the quadratic formula. And then just evaluate. Keep in mind if there's a plus or minus in the quadratic formula, this indicates that you might have at most two solutions. So example four, we're going to do several of these problems by solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. So number one, we're going to solve the equation x squared plus 8x plus 12 equals zero. So first, notice that this is a quadratic equation, otherwise we can't use the quadratic formula. And notice that this equation is in general form. So we don't need to simplify at all. It's already in the form that we need to find out what a, b, and c are. So a is the coefficient in front of the x squared, 1. b is 8. And c is 12. So now the quadratic formula can be used to solve this equation. So again, it's a very good habit to get into by writing out what the formula is and then just substitute in the a, b, and the c. So the quadratic formula says the answers are x equals opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And this entire numerator is divided by 2 times a. So now substitute in the values. So opposite of b would be the opposite of 8, which would be negative 8 plus or minus square root b squared would be 8 squared, subtract 4 times a, which was 1, times c, which was 12. All divided by, not just the square root, but the entire numerator, divided by 2 times 1, which was 2 times a. So now, simplify what's inside the square root. You have negative 8 on the outside, plus or minus, square root of 8 squared is 64, subtract 4 times 1 is 4, times 12 is 48, so negative 48. And this entire thing, numerators divided by 2. Keep going. So you have x is equal to, simplify inside the square root still. So negative 8 plus or minus square root. 64 minus 48 is 16. All divided by 2. And so now, notice that you can simplify the square root. The square root of 16 is 4. So this becomes negative 8 plus or minus 4. All divided by 2. And so notice that the plus or minus means that you have two solutions. So let's write out what the solutions actually look like. x is equal to negative 8 plus 4, all divided by 2, which will be negative 4 divided by 2, or negative 2. And then the other solution would be x equals negative 8 minus 4, all divided by 2, which will give you negative 12 divided by 2, or negative 6. So the two solutions... are x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 6. So notice that the answers, the solutions, are integer values. 
So that means that you could have factored the original equation to find out what x is equal to. Okay, let's try another problem. Number two. This time we're going to solve the equation 5x squared equals negative x plus 2. So this is a quadratic equation, but notice that it's not in general form. If you want to rewrite this into general form, one side of the equation must be 0, and all the other terms need to be on the opposite side. So let's add x to the left side of the equation and subtract 2 to the left side of the equation. So 5x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. So now it's a quadratic equation. in general form. And so that means we can identify the a, b, and the c. You have a is equal to 5, b is equal to 1, and c is equal to negative 2. So again, it helps to rewrite this in descending order where the x squared is the first term, the x is the second term, and the constant term is the last term. So that way you have a, b, c in that, in that exact order. So now let's use the quadratic formula. to solve this quadratic equation. So x is equal to opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared subtract 4 times a times c all divided by 2 times a. Let's see what the answers will be this time. Opposite of b would be opposite of 1, so negative 1, plus or minus square root. Inside the square root you have 1 squared because that's b squared. Subtract 4 times a, a is 5, times c, which is negative 2, all divided by 2 times a, 2 times 5. So with the quadratic formula, you need to be very careful with your negative signs, because if you make a minor mistake, then it's going to cause the answers to be incorrect as well. So you have negative 1, plus or minus, square root. Let's figure out what's inside the square root. Well, 1 squared is 1, and now you have negative 4 times 5, that's negative 20. Negative 20 times negative 2 gives you plus 40, or positive 40. So inside the square root, you have 1 plus 40, and the denominator is 10. So now we have negative 1 plus or minus square root of 41 all divided by 10. So notice this time that the square root of 41 can't be simplified to be a whole number, not like square root of 16 was in the last example. Square root of 41 cannot be broken down any. 41 is a prime number. Nothing goes into 41 other than itself and 1. So that means x equals negative 1 plus square root of 41 all over 10. Or x equals negative 1 minus square root of 41 all divided by 10. And so again, you have two solutions. So notice that the only difference between the solutions is that one had a plus square root 41 and the other one had a minus square root 41. And you can leave your answer in this form. This is what's called exact form. If you put this into a calculator to find out what the decimal approximation is, you don't have the exact answer anymore. You have an approximation. So when you enter this in my math lab, remember from the previous video, you enter it as negative 1 plus square root 41 divided by 10, comma, negative 1 minus square root 41 all over 10. You don't need to put in the x equals. Okay, number three. This time the equation is negative 2x plus 1 in parentheses squared equals 5. So this is definitely a quadratic equation because you'll have an x squared if you multiply negative 2x plus 1 out. But it's definitely not in general form either. So we need to do a simplifying before we can figure out the general form and the a, b, and the c for the quadratic formula. So take negative 2x plus 1 times it by itself because you have negative 2x plus 1 squared, and the right side of the equation will just stay 5. So you need a FOIL. Negative 2x times negative 2x gives you 4x squared. Negative 2x times 1 is negative 2x, and then you'll have another two, negative 2x because 1 times negative 2x, so you'll have negative 4x, and then 1 times 1 gives you 1 equals 5. So now we're getting closer. We removed any parentheses from the quadratic equation. So now I'll move all the terms to one side, so subtract 5 to the left side of the equation, so, the left, so that one side of the equation is equal to 0, so 4x squared minus 4x, subtract 4 is equal to 0. Well, this is now a quadratic equation in general form.
which means that you could use the quadratic formula now. You could say a equals 4, b equals negative 4, and c equals negative 4 as well. But notice that you can also factor out a 4 because 4 is in common with all the terms. So let's see if we can make the equation a little bit easier to use, the a, b, and the c. To factor out a 4, you have x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. And if you divide both sides of the equation by 4, you have x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0 divided by 4 is still 0. So notice that the equation still is equal to 0, but now we reduce the equation to be a little bit simpler. The a equals 1, the b is equal to negative 1, and the c is also negative 1, so that we can use the quadratic formula to be able to solve this equation. So the quadratic formula says x equals opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a, and substituting the values. So the opposite of b would be opposite of negative 1 is positive 1, plus or minus, square root, b squared. Well, notice that the b that we're going to be plugging in is, in, is negative 1, so that, make sure that goes in parentheses, negative 1 squared, minus 4 times a is 1, times c is also negative 1, and so that is divided by 2 times a, 2 times 1. So it's same as the last two problems. Simplify inside the square root. So you have 1 plus or minus square root. Negative 1 in parentheses squared is 1. And then the other term would be negative 4 times 1, negative 4 times negative 1 gives you plus 4 or positive 4, all divided by 2. And so that gives us x equals negative 1 plus or minus square root of 5, all divided by 2. So again, we have a square root of 5. That does not reduce to a whole number. So if you put in square root of 5 into the calculator, that would be in a decimal approximation. So let's just keep it square root of 5. And so the two solutions would be negative 1 plus square root of 5, all divided by 2, or x equals negative 1 minus square root of 5, all divided by 2. And two solutions. Okay, so there's three problems with the quadratic formula. Let's see a couple more. Number four, this time the equation is negative three x squared is equal to six subtract seven x. So we know the story now. Make sure that the equation is quadratic. It is because the highest power on the variable is two, but it's not in general form. So let's make sure that it's in general form. So add seven x and also subtract six so that one side of the equation is equal to zero and all the other terms are on the opposite side. So we have a quadratic equation. And it's in general form now. So notice that I already rewrote this in descending order. That way I can identify the a, b, and the c. So a is negative 3, b is 7, and c is negative 6. And these three numbers will go into the quadratic formula. which says x equals opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2 times a. So opposite of b would be opposite of 7, so negative 7 plus or minus square root. You have b squared would be 7 squared minus 4 times a, negative 3, times c, negative 6 all divided by 2 times a, so 2 times negative 3. So simplify inside the square root. You have 7 squared is 49, and then negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. Positive 12 times negative 6 gives you negative 72, and this is divided by negative 6. And so we have x equals so negative 7 plus or minus square root of negative 23 divided by negative 6. So you should have bells and whistles going off because we know that we cannot take the square root of a negative value. So this square root of negative 23, it is not a real number. It's undefined. So in other words, there are no real solutions to this quadratic equation. Now you might be wondering, can we simplify this using imaginary numbers? 
Yes, you can, but we don't have to worry about that. We just need to know that we don't have any real solutions to the equation. Okay, one more. Number five, we have 2x minus 3 in parentheses, all squared equals negative 24x. So this problem looks very similar to number three. Make sure that you multiply 2x minus 3 out because you want to make sure that you remove any grouping symbols. You want to make sure that the equation is in general form first for the quadratic equation. So FOIL, 2 times 2x times 2x gives you 4x squared. 2x times negative 3 gives you negative 6x. And then you'll have another negative 6x. And then negative 3 times negative 3 gives you 9 equals negative 24x. Combine any like terms. So you have 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals negative 24x. And now make sure that one side of the equation is equal to 0. So add 24x to the left side of the equation. 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 equals 0. So negative 12 plus 24x will give you 12x. So now we have a quadratic equation in general form again. So a is equal to 4, b is equal to 12, and c is 9. And so now we can use the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula again says opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared subtract 4 times a times c all divided by 2 times a. The most common mistake with the quadratic formula is forgetting the square on the b or making it a plus inside the square root. It needs to be a b squared and it has to be a subtract 4 times a times c. So this is equal to opposite of b would be negative 12 plus or minus square root, b squared would be 12 squared, minus 4 times a, times 4 again, times 9, which is c, all divided by 2 times a, so 2 times 4. And so we have x is equal to negative 12 plus or minus square root, 12 squared is 144, and then 4 times 4 times 9 is also 144. So subtract 144, and this is all divided by 2 times 4, 8. So notice that this is another unique situation. What's inside the square root will be 0 this time. So you have negative 12 plus or minus square root of 0, all divided by 8. Well, the square root of 0 is 0. 0 squared gives you 0. So negative 12 plus or minus... 0 divided by 8. And so you don't need plus or minus 0. It's just not going to change the sign at all. So this is negative 12 divided by 8. And that simplifies or reduces the lowest terms as negative 3 divided by 2. So x equals negative 3 divided by 2. And so notice that this time we only have one solution. And that's because the plus or minus disappeared because it's plus or minus zero. There is no real sign on the zero. So this gives you an idea of how to use the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. Make sure the quadratic equation is written in general form first. Then you can use the quadratic formula by identifying the a, b, and the c, and then substituting into the quadratic formula and simplifying. But you can have two solutions, one solution, and sometimes no solutions. And so this gets into the last thing that we're going to talk about in this video. It's what's called the discriminant. The quantity that's inside the square root, b squared minus 4ac, is inside the radical sign in the quadratic formula. This b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant. And so this table is going to show a summary of what the discriminant can tell us in terms of quadratic equations that are written in general form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. It's going to tell us how many solutions we can expect and what type of solutions to expect. So the first case, what if you calculate the discriminant and you get the a, b, and the c from the coefficients from the quadratic equation in general form? If the discriminant is a positive number, that means your equation will have two unequal real solutions. So two solutions that are not the same number. What that means in terms of graphs 
which we're going to talk about in the next chapter, if you graph this quadratic function, your graph will cross the x-axis at two different x-intercepts. Those solutions are corresponding to x-intercepts. If the discriminant turns out to be zero, and we just saw this in the last example, if what's inside this root turns out to be zero, then square root of zero is just zero and you had one solution. And the reason why it's just one solution is you have what's called a repeated solution. That one solution occurs twice. So in terms of graphs, your graph will touch the x-axis and it will appear like it's bouncing off the x-axis. So you'll have one x-intercept instead of two. And then the last case, what if the discriminant, what's inside the root, is a negative number? Well, we just talked about that in the last example as well. You have no real solutions. Or you can say you have two imaginary solutions, one or the other. And that means, in terms of graphs, that your graph will stay entirely above the x-axis, or the graph could be below the x-axis entirely. But you do not have any x-intercepts. Okay, so let's talk about example five. Let's get an idea of what the discriminant can actually tell us. So find the discriminant of the following quadratic equation to determine the number and the type of solutions that we have. And the quadratic equation that we have is negative 4x squared plus 5x is equal to negative 8. So notice that this is the quadratic equation, but it's not in general form. We need this in general form before we can figure out the a, b, and the c, the coefficients for the discriminant. So add 8 to the left side of the equation. So you have negative 4x squared plus 5x plus 8 equals 0. And now it's a quadratic equation. in general form. Now we're not asked to solve the equation, so don't solve the equation using factoring or the quadratic formula. You want to just find out what the discriminant is. So the a is negative 4, the b is 5, and the c is 8. And the discriminant is the number b squared minus 4 times a times c. So it's going to look just like the quadratic formula, but we're only figuring out what's inside the square root this time. So b squared would be 5 squared minus 4 times a, so 4 times negative 4, times c, which is 8. And if you calculate this, it'll be 25 plus 128, which is 143. And what's important is that this number is a positive 143, which means that you have a positive discriminant. You have two unequal real solutions. So we answered the question. It asked, what is the number of solutions you're going to expect? You'll have two solutions. And what are the type of solutions? They are real solutions. So now that we've talked about the discriminant, we can figure out how many solutions and what type of solutions we'll have before we even start solving a quadratic equation. Now, when you solve a quadratic equation, we have now four different methods that you can use. You have factoring, you have square property, completing the square, and also quadratic formula. The quadratic formula will always work, but keep in mind, it does take time to solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. Factoring might be faster in some cases, Squirt property might be faster in some cases, completing the square might be faster, and then sometimes the quadratic formula might be faster. It all depends on the situation. So if your equation is in general form, you can either try factoring first. If it doesn't factor very easily, you can go straight to the quadratic formula. If the equation is not in general form, where you have one side of the equation is being squared and the other side of the equation is a non-zero number, then you might want to use a squirt property. So it depends on the situation. You have four different methods. One method might be better than another. So this is a good place to stop this video after we've talked about solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about the Pythagorean theorem and other applications that come about from solving quadratic equations.